morning and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. And when you listen, stream, or download straight to your device, CastBox is your best option. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started. Enjoy the show. All right, guys. Good morning. Good night. Thank you for choosing the Body Snatchers podcast. Tino here. Uh, I'm hanging out with Mikey from Nerds in the Dark and also Kells from The Kells Show. How are you guys doing today? Great. Fantastic. That was fancy. Uh, Today we're going to be talking all about gun violence. (sighs) So, you know. Weird flex on gun violence. I didn't know how else to spin it because you really can't make it funny. Uh, The truth is it's a pretty serious matter. And for whatever reason, people are thinking that this has something to do with video games, which I just find to be insanely interesting. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm sorry for the uh, serious notes. If you guys came here for comedy, like you might find some, but we're all pretty big, passionate gamers. And that's why I invited these two guys on the show today so we could discuss this. So who wants to kick things off with what happened and where we're at now for our listeners? Well, uh, we had a couple mass shootings over the weekend. Uh, we had the uh, Dayton, Ohio shooting Sunday morning, but just before that on Saturday, there was the shooting in uh, El Paso, Texas. A uh, lot of a lot of people injured, a lot of people dead, um, and all in a very short time frame. Yeah, and uh, the one in El Paso, that was uh, Patrick uh, Crucis, or I think is the, they said his name was. It was a 21-year-old guy. Who um, I think when they question him about it, they yeah you know, they haven't released much uh, information in either situation, uh, but I believe that you know he said that it was uh, basically like he was on an immigrant crusade or something of that nature. Yeah, there was a post on Eight Chan um, that was basically a manifesto that people are attributing to him, but it's not a hundred percent confirmed that it's him that did go off on a lot of stuff on immigration. Immigration and the, right, uh, so it's it's a lot of speculation, um, you know, but we're just. Uh, letting you guys know what we've heard thus far. Kels, you looked like you wanted to chime in on that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that it happened. And I don't understand why people are like that. I mean, I was brought up correctly, you know, not hating anyone at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's super sad. And it's, uh, you know, more so than it just being sad. It's scary as hell every time something like this happens, mm-hmm. you know, because just imagine going to a freaking Walmart. Uh, in fact, I messaged Kels earlier, asked him if he wanted to get on the show tonight. And he's like, I'm at Walmart. He's like, I'm like, you're at Walmart. I'm at Walmart. <laughs> you know? So it's like kind of funny, you know, but yeah. when you sit down and think about it, you know, you're going in there. Uh, I think I was buying a micro SD card for my Nintendo switch. Um, so I can do some gaming when I get off. Just imagine if you're going to get something so minor so quickly and just all of a sudden it's, you know, everybody's on the floor, people are screaming, people are running. That's like, dude, what the hell? You know, that's I, I, I could only imagine, you know, it's just it's it's insane to me. And and then, you know, not to pull attention from that, but, you know, we're, this whole show is not going to be about that. We're just giving you guys some of the facts of what happened. As far as the Dayton incident, that was what I believe it was nine dead and 27 uh, were injured. And this dude was like, man, like from everything that's been released thus far, he seems like he was kind of like a ticking time bomb. Um, granted, I don't know what's factual or what's not, but he had a lot of issues in high school. They said he had like uh a book of, of people that he wanted to kill, boys, men, and, and women specifically that he wanted to rape. And it's just like outlandish to me because it's like, how does something like this not, uh, you know, get brought to the proper authorities or how come nobody seeks out uh, help for this individual, you know? I mean, and granted, I don't know the whole story, but it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, part of it, you know, is, is kind of, you know, we don't we still don't know all the facts for that one, but we do know that like one of the first people like killed was his sister. Um, so there might have been some like other flags there, of course, um, and him just attempting to, you know, uh, get past that. Um, but, yeah, that whole incident, I think that like took place inside of like 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it takes. You know, and also was like huge into guns, gun freak, and was always going to the gun range. And everything was uh, very easy to access for him, you know? Yeah. Maybe maybe a little too easy. It's not my place to say I don't want to make this a political show because that's not what we do here. Um, I hate politics. Yeah, I, I think we all do, which is why we, you know, um, just vast in video games and anime and all the things that we love because we don't like fighting this battle. Um 
you know, but again, it's just, it's just an observation. I'm not saying one thing on this show should be this way or that way when it comes to, you know, gun control or violence or whatever. Uh, I am just stating facts. That's what we know. That is a fact. Take it or leave it. But getting to, you know, kind of the point of the show. So with everything that's been going on, what I thought was like an interesting twist, and I think any gamer would agree with me, is what's going on, uh, things that the president is saying and, and, and the things that we're seeing on the news specifically about video games. You know, so like plot twist, like how did that happen? Anybody want to chime in? Because I have tons of information and in, in, in opinions. It just seems on to me that past generations and seeing how video games have advanced so much, they immediately like jump to the conclusions because they don't understand video games. They just don't understand it. Like <laughs> not they don't. At all. Like, they just they don't. automatically think. It's like you can say the same thing about T V, um, watching Netflix and stuff like that. You can say the same thing about anything in life. It's all about how you were raised and how you deciphered that information that you're getting. It's entertainment. Like it's not real. So. Well, I, I mean, and I, I'm going to have to agree with that wholeheartedly because I mean, like, and this might be a, a little bit extreme, uh, you know, what I'm about to say, but I think it's necessary. Uh, when you look at things, you know, forget like 1950s or whatever. I'm talking like, look at like the Crusades and like the Holy War and like yeah. all the, you know, like this, th- that kind of stuff and genocide and da- Darfur with people who don't have access to electronics or plumbing, you know, much less video games. And, and, and yet the, the violence continues, you know, it's something that just happens. And that's something that, you know, that's, that's the nature of man, whether or not you want to admit it. That's uh, something that we can't completely overcome. You know, we we don't live in a perfect utopia where, you know, these things don't exist. Unfortunately, they are true. But to say that video games is the root cause of something that's been going on since the beginning of man is outlandish. Yeah, like someone playing Tetris, like, oh, my God, they're going to be violent and kill someone at a school or um, like, no. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah, it it makes no sense. And and like, here's what I think is happening um, in, in regards to this this whole situation. And it's really screwed up. And whatever call me a conspiracy theorist whatever you want but don't you think the timing for all of this is just a little funny um you're you're taking this video game situation uh i'm sorry this this situation with the shooting specifically and and spinning it to your agenda and here's what i mean by that is starting september 1st uh they're implementing that new tax on video games i did not know that i didn't know it started Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of facts jotted down here um, just so that I don't mess up things in the podcast. I don't usually read. Usually I'm just off top, but here we go. Um, so there's the 10 percent uh, tax on video games that's oh coming out. Uh, so that's 300 billion in, in Chinese imports. OK, so that's that's quite a bit of money that they intend to make on that. That's September 1st, uh, which basically means you're going to have about a 50 to 100 dollar increase, depending on what council you're looking at for next gen systems, current gens, video games themselves. Uh, whatever. And in, in fact, it's it's so interesting because Nintendo uh, getting ready to come out with the Switch Lite this fall, which we're all excited for, in order to combat this whole situation, they've taken their manufacturing, which was usually in China, and moved that over to, uh, I think, uh, Southwest Asia, you know, which I think is like crazy, but it made sense. They're like, how do we get out of this? Boom, pop-up factory like Amazon, make it happen. Um, and Sony hasn't really said too much as to what they're going to do, but I'm sure that they're going to you know, make moves in order to uh, avoid this as well. But it's just kind of weird, uh, you know, getting to my point, that they're spinning this whole thing around almost to justify uh, you know, what they're doing. Granted, again, I know con- conspiracy theories, it probably sounds a little bit extreme, but all I'm saying is that when this comes to lime, limelight and people are you know, four weeks from now not thinking about this, initially and focusing on what's going on with the video game taxes you know in the back of their mind they're gonna be like man screw those video games we don't care uh for what arguments they have and all this other kind of stuff i mean you know how this works yeah but that's just my, yeah. that's my two cents i you know i don't i don't think you're wrong about the spin and uh the reasoning behind it it is uh i mean i've never say i'm, I'm never gonna say the shooting's a convenient timing but i will say that like pinning a scapegoat like video games, the convenient time, but it's also not new. It's something that's been going on for, I mean, it's been what, 30 years since, or, or 20 years since Columbine. And then they blame yeah. doom, um, you know, and it, it just keeps going like that, you know? Uh, but to touch on uh, what you said, I mean, this is really just a scapegoat just to let other stuff pass. Cause I mean, us is probably the third 
highest in revenue for video games, but is yeah. definitely number one for violence, and the rest of the top ten for revenue don't even come anywhere close. So. No, and 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 just to um, be clear, just in case somebody misinterpreted what I said, I'm not saying that I think this was a. Uh, you know, some sort of like a staged event or something like conspiracy, like with the government, just, just to be clear. Um, what I am saying is that they're taking a bad situation and, and spinning it for their agenda, uh, which I think is super messed up, but that's, that's what's happening. Um, and, and yet again, they're, they're gonna, you know, they're not, I shouldn't say gonna, they're in the midst of finding ways to avoid like the actual issues, which come down to just, you know, mental illness and, and treatment and things like that for these individuals, um, you know, that, that, that need it. You know, any anything um, to find that scapegoat, as you said. Uh, Ethan, did you want to chime well, in? Well, I mean, mental health, video games, but people forget that these kids go to school and everything, and it should be detected as they're going through school. So guidance counselors need to get more involved with the kids as well as the parents because it's the parents who it all stems from, what they allow them to have access to and what to tell them like, what, what right from wrong is. Because I grew up around video games. Um, my other three little brothers as well, um, they grew up around video games. They played games like Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. But our parents literally were there to decipher the difference. Like, you don't do that. This is, this is fate. This is one other life. You know, you can let them do your thing. But in the real society, this is how things work. You don't do it like that. You don't go around yeah. strip clubs and shooting up strip clubs and, you know, going like, no, you don't do any of that. It's all fake. It's virtual reality. It's another world. It starts with parents. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you entirely, you know, and it's, uh, you know, crazy for me. And in fact, I have a, a handful of, um, you know, statistics and things that I gathered just to kind of show, uh, you know, our, our, our listeners and our viewers, just some of the things that, you know, are loosely facts i mean it's research from like accredited places so i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna take it take it with a grain of salt if you like but whatever you know somebody's got to spit some facts out here so 90 percent cent excuse me 97 percent of kids uh 12 to 17 play video games 21.53 billion uh is the, like the annual amount domestically that uh that we make you know off of those so it's like okay that's that's uh that's 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 quite a bit of money but that's more so that's a lot of people that are you know in the midst of playing these video games every day um and i don't think that that justifies like uh the amount of mass shootings and things that we have because that we would be off the rails if you know that made sense um it also shows that uh between 1994 and 2014 uh violent crimes in the u.s and juveniles have decreased by 37 percent uh, and murders with juveniles have has fallen by seventy six percent, you know, as as video games have kind of you know rose to stardom to some degree. Um, you can call that like outlandish if you want to, but I mean, if you're not going to look at these facts, uh, which clearly you know correlate somehow, then you know you can't you, you can't say that uh, you know that, that that it correlates with murders. But then these you know these statistics over here don't make any sense. I would think. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Uh, all right, so. Uh, touching on, on what you said, I mean, you're exactly right. Like uh, ESA, the uh, Entertainment Software Association, they put out a statement uh, just after all of this, uh, basically saying that uh, there's no causal connection between video games and violence. Over 165 million people uh, uh, across America play every day and like billions of people play every day. And in other societies, not America, um, they don't have to contend with these tragic levels of violence. Um, so it's just not, it, it, it's not that link. It's just not what it is. Yeah, it's it's not there. And in fact, in uh, what was it uh, 2011, uh, there was a was it Brown versus the Entertainment Merchants uh, with the Supreme Court. It was a seven to two uh, ruling to show that video games do not cause violence with minors. That was like a huge thing, which you know we may have not been paying as much attention because Facebook was just kind of becoming like <laughs> the go to and and so to you know that that sort of stuff. But, uh, you know, now, I mean, we can go back, we can look, you know, we're old enough to remember that. And it's like, well, why is this relevant again when we've when we've done the research, when we've gone over the facts, when we've done this whole thing? Um, and, and in fact, in kind of like direct opposition to what they're saying, and I think that maybe you guys can relate because I know I can on a personal level. Um, the According to Stanford University and Ohio State Medical Research Center, uh, video game uh, link, like basically facts with like a whole bunch of subjects that they did this on. Um 
video games stimulate two regions of the brain. Um, it hyper stimulates them. And they happen to be the regions that are associated with motivation and goal orientation, which I yes. think makes perfect sense. You know, we, we see that all the time with, uh, uh, with, with video games. For, forget just normal video games. Think about mobile games that like your grandma and stuff is playing. Remember when Candy Crush came yeah. out? They used the statistics to design a game that would maximize on that uh, you know stimulus on those two sections of the brain, making you addicted, and then on the backside, you know, charging money to make you feel you know good about it. A, a, a free, the freemium games, you know, how how many times yeah, have we seen that happen? Flash how many how many cases of uh, of Candy Crush do we have? Uh, you know, with somebody ki- committing a you know a murder or a, a heinous crime? I'm gonna go on the low zero. Not ones. a damn, not a damn thing. Yeah, you know, and, and granted, like that's a very straightforward, easy to you know describe game. But when you've got games like even games like Call of Duty, you know, yeah. for people that um, you know are depressed, yeah, you get your you know rage kids that have issues um, and they have mental issues. That's a little bit different. But for what about the, the the other people that get involved? You know, the people that don't have time because they work so much or the between work and school and no life. Um, you know, they, they get on these these games with their friends and they get on as a team. You know, you're, you're using uh, teamwork. You guys are, you know, accomplishing goals together. Uh, you're slowly unlocking, you know, you know, weapons in that game specifically, which it's not because, oh, I'm going to blow everything up. I mean, yeah, we say that, but I mean, really, you accomplished a goal. You had to, uh, you know, put in X amount of time in order to get this kind of reward for it. And it feels good. You know, it's nice to, uh, to, to get that kind of response from something when life isn't doing it for you. So basically what a lot of this, a lot, of, a lot of these studies are saying, and the way that I'm taking it, is that these are, um, to some degree, uh, anti-depression yeah, measures. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't think that they make up for pills or a, a you know, therapist or anything, but I think that they help. They're an amazing coping mechanism for most people. And, and, and I truly believe that on a personal level, based on you know, my own experiences and literally everybody I know who's ever played a video game. Bet. I mean, there's people who are alive today because of video games. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that there are people alive today because of video yep, games. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, it definitely got me out of a lot of stupid shit growing up. Uh, I'm not saying I was antisocial, but you know, a lot had to do with you know school systems as well too. But it's helped me even now. You know, going through the stuff that I do now, I don't have much time to play. But I'm always usually pissed off throughout the day. And then once I come home and, you know, chill and everything like that, um, it gets me away from uh, <laughs> stuff that I do at work. And it just makes me forget. And the whole achievement unlock and playing with playing with friends and stuff and doing that type of stuff. And it makes you feel good. It makes you forget about, you know, the normal day bullshit that you go through. So No, dude, every every Twitch streamer girl is a freaking borderline <laughs> killer ready to pop. <laughs> That's what this is, basically. You know, That's what they want you to how dare you sell me? First, it starts with gamer girl bathwater and it oh, ends yeah. with murder, apparently. Yeah, see, it, it makes no goddamn sense. Yo, you're going to have uh, to help me with that math, man. I don't know how you got there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quick math, bro. It's, it's, it's really easy. First, you got to be a celebrity. Second, you got to grab him by the. Oh, wait. Was that a was that a political Whoa. Trump quote? Whoa. That was an actual quote. That was Dude, that was an actual quote day. from. Uh, from our commander in chief yeah <laughs> people don't forget he also survived a stone cold stunner though so anybody who does that you know it's my <laughs> i'm just i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm i'm kidding i'm kidding all the minorities are like we thought you were with us bro <laughs> i'm still with you i'm not a hodge twin i promise you i don't know if you guys know who the hodge twins are they're like fitness comedians who i used to like and now i'm like you guys are like doing this political thing a little too much um but getting back to the point so one thing that really, really irritates me that people ignore all the time, uh, and I'm, I'm going to use, again, another personal example because I have a lot of experience with it, is, is games like Minecraft. Um, you know, because when they say video games, they paint this big, ugly picture as if kids are only playing, you know, Call of Duty. First of all, when you're talking about children, children in 2019, all these damn kids are playing is Fortnite. They don't care about the guns. They care about the cool dance moves that your yep. parents have to spend 2 or $3 on a piece, you know? That's not breeding killers. And, and you know, with, with Minecraft, have you guys ever seen some of these amazing engineering projects? There's no other way to describe it, whether it be something as and it's not simple, but simple as far as, uh, you know, recreating like Hogwarts or something like that with excruciating detail or being something more complex as using Redstone to literally build uh, a, a functional computer or uh, a Game Boy Advance within a video game. 
You know, this is like genius level IQ. And and we're not, you know, paying attention to these things. You know, all this stuff gets pushed to the wayside and people are thinking, oh, Mortal Kombat in 94 had fatalities. Got to be why we got killing going on 30 yeah, years later. Someone gotta in the be. is like trying to bicycle kick someone and like, you know, shoot a spear out of their damn hand and everything like that. Get over here. I try. I, I tried the bicycle kick. I almost broke my own neck. I would have been a statistic. I tried, as soon as I came out, I did the whole. Wah! Wasn't cool. I fell really hard. Lesson learned. Plus, like, and, and even Mortal Kombat. Forget like, you know, just winning fights and stuff. Do you know how good it made you feel back in the day when you could remember from your Tips and Tricks magazine the freaking twenty-five button yeah, combos in order like, to do a fatality? Yeah. You know that was yeah. rewarding as hell. I bet friends. Please let me just beat you so I can just practice my fatality real quick. I got to get you to the right area. Like everybody did that, man. No. And you know what? Everybody felt good afterwards. Like nobody was like, oh, you you beat me. Now I'm going to be a murderer and kill you. That's not what happened. They'd be like, bro, did you see that? That was so amazing. Let me get mine off now. Like that's how this works in reality, in real life with normal people who don't have mental issues who play video games. Uh, and that's on the extreme side. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. Like, I just don't understand. It's just watch the... To- you just got to watch the ones, you know, take care of everyone who you're around. Um, those nerdy, quiet kids, to say hey to them, you know, take them on your wing. Like, like it can happen with anyone. Not, And they can be non-gamers as well, too. They can just have be one of the stockbrokers, and they have one of those bad days, and they just go crazy. It, you never know who the person is. But just don't, don't use video games as a scapegoat because yeah. that's not it. I mean, you can blame Netflix. You can blame Hulu. You can blame anime and everything like that. But it's... It's the person. <laughs> it's it's sloppy, and I you know I think me and Mikey probably feel especially defensive because we were almost in tears after finally completing Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers with how amazing the story was. Let me tell you something: we don't play these games like just because they're video games. The story that we got out of that at the end of it was better than like Avengers Endgame and uh, what James Cameron any film like all rolled into one like. Yeah, Don't not you, Kels. You, have, you haven't finished it. Kels is only level thirty. There's a lot of work to do. <laughs> how are you, how are you still level thirty? Like, no, I haven't played that. I was playing Torkoal like, uh, like a week, taking a break. A couple of days. Trash. Taking a break. That game is not making me violent either. Guy. You know, but but even Final. <laughs> But but it, uh, going to our point again, even Final Fantasy, take Final Fantasy VII. What happens when you level up? Yeah. Slow motion screen. You you flip the Buster Sword around. It comes down. You know what I mean? Like it's stuff to make you feel good. It's always been this way. Yeah. You know, stop attack. Stop attacking our video games. That's that's my message. You know, if you blame whatever you want, blame some guy that's smarter than me that went to school to study the ins and outs of the brain. And, you know, the, all the, the bad things that happen when you don't give people the proper rewards and they don't feel, you know, valued and, and, you know, things of that nature in life. You figure out how to fix that. Figure out, like, the real causes. You know, is it the school Definitely system? Is it parenting? Uh, you know, is, is it sports? You know, it, it's so many things. But don't blame, don't blame video games for that. If anything, I would think that, like, sports would cause people to go crazy just because of the kind of pressure you get from, like, sports dads, from a dad who, like, almost yep. made it to, like, the NFL or something. People be going crazy. You ever seen those guys yeah. hanging out with their kid? Do it, Carter. Do it. Do it or I disown you. People what? Going crazy, like, because it's uh, a longtime uh, player of a team switches to another team, people burning jerseys and c- creating, like, riots and stuff, or when teams are playing against each other, throwing batteries at each other and getting into fights and, like, come on. Really? Hard. Is, is it really video games? Is it? Is it really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, we just we just live in crazy times. You know, we we live in a, in a world where you can be a man of color, take a knee on a football field, and now people are burning flags in Nike apparel. You know, and and, and again, not choosing any size with that. But I'm just saying, like, that's the kind of, of world that we live in right now. So I, I guess, you know, when I when I say that out loud and I vocalize it, I really shouldn't be surprised that we have these extremists that are immediately attacking video games. But, you know, if, if you're listening to this podcast and you think that this is even up for debate, like, it's not. You know, and if, if you want to come and challenge, like, any one of us or talk about it or, you know, whatever, like, we're here. We're not we're not going anywhere, no. you know, <laughs> unless we go to Walmart. We're not, we're not, we don't go to Walmart because apparently yeah, things go like, down. Even that, the, we go to Tarjay. The shooting that happened with that, uh, as of today, farm area, like, they to didn't Tar-Jay say anything about video games that one. But because it's a nerdy loner type dude, they immediately jumped to video games. It's like, wow, here we go. That was not me in school. 
I just had a close knit, you know, <laughs> of friends that I had, and that was it. I did it school. Immediate. Jumping to conclusions. No, I, I, I get you. I get you, man. Yeah, I just, I just hope you know, people aren't so sheepish. You know, I, I hope that like people really aren't buying into this. You know, I hope I hope that this is mostly just media hype and things of that nature, because it's going to be really sad if you see a bunch of like overprotective soccer moms who don't understand video games like freaking out. And I get it; like society is getting to the point to where like because so many people play video games, like we should be wising up to it. You know, so future parents are going to be like, "That's not true," but we're not quite there yet. It's going to be probably another decade before you know a lot of this extra crap is pushed out. So um, until that day comes, we're going to be here talking about stuff like this. So we're nearly at time, and I, I think I pretty much, you know, said anything that was on my mind or just thoughts about it, um, you know, again, without going down the political rabbit hole, just a few mentions. Was there anything um, while we're on the air that you guys wanted to, you know, mention or, you know, make your statement or whatever before we go? I, I, I'll give you one right here. Uh, a lot of people don't know this um, because everybody talks about, like, what's going on with kids and what's affecting the kids. And, you know, Fortnite's huge, but Fortnite has, like, an age range of the most people that play it. Um, but, like, one of the biggest games, if you look in, like, YouTube numbers, analytics, and stuff like that, you look at the biggest game that kids are playing and watching and consuming. Ugh. It's, like, Roblox. Like That is true. My nephew is freaking addicted to that. Yeah. You talk, you talk to anybody who knows anything about video games and, and knows a kid... And they're going to tell you that that, that that kid plays Roblox. And it's just like, is that, is that the violence? Is that is that what we're getting at? I mean, have you seen this game? <laughs> now, it's, 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 it's video games, but, you know, 50 years ago, Tom and Jerry and, and uh, the Looney Tunes and all them, like, like they weren't like yeah, right? literally like, taking guns and blowing each other's faces off. And uh, you know what I mean? And it's just it's like, what? Okay. Just, just when you think about it, you know, or dropping anchors on each other, like yes. things that like meant certain death every time. But yeah, it's it's probably video games, even though this used to come on TV in the middle of the day. Uh, and video games have a whole system set up for mature content and things of that nature, where with, where parents are are more informed and you know can assist with all nah, that stuff. all those gun shooting Not and back stuff. Not back in the day, GI Joe and everything. And nah, you know that didn't create violence. Nah, it was the video games. Gotta kill Cobra. <laughs> Gotta kill Cobra, man. Knowing is half the battle. The Cobra Commander. <laughs> There's only one way to take him out. Video games. Yeah, Cobra Commander probably played a lot of video games. That's why he was why, why he was that way. Could be fucking Donkey Kong and shit. <laughs> oh god. Right? He's like, that's that's it. That's this this is the last goddamn time. I'm doing something about this. Cobra Commander. So alright guys, well, you know, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, again, you know, if you guys want to talk about it, we would love to hear your thoughts, uh, whether you agree, disagree, whatever. I mean, any platform you want, uh, head over to bodysnatchersmedia.com. We're on uh, Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Uh, and that's pretty much it, because that's like all that matters. I mean, but as far as audio, like, you know, we're on like Spotify and iTunes and CastBox, Podbean, things of that nature. So check us out. Um, and I'm also going to attach links for, uh, the two gentlemen that joined me today. Uh, one is a Twitch streamer. The other one kind of does what I do, but in his own way. So it's definitely worth, you know, checking out if you want to hear some different opinions, different topics and things of that nature. Absolutely. Definitely. So, all right guys, have a good night. Yeah.